Someday, and that day may never come, I may call upon you to do a service for me. Until that day, accept this as a gift. Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. Welcome to the first part of my playthrough of the Godfather to Don's edition. I told you guys that we had another crime game coming up, and I hope that you guys enjoy this. I know you guys love it when I play these crime games. If you guys do enjoy this series, please do drop a like, because it does help the series out a lot, especially with the algorithm. And I hope you guys like my um, cosplay here. I tend to dress up as the characters um, in games that I play. And so this is my best attempt at Aldo's um, uh, outfit, the main character. But um, this game, a lot of people don't even know this game exists. Um, uh, this is one of the best gangster games I've ever played. And this might be the best Mafia game that I've ever played. Out of all the Mafia games that i played, Liberty City Stories, you know, uh, Mafia 2, Mafia Definitive Edition, the Godfather games, uh, the Sopranos game. I would say that this is the best Mafia game out of all of them. Um, so this game is based directly on the movie. And um, uh, if you haven't seen The Godfather Part 1, I very strongly recommend that you watch it. You can watch it on YouTube. I think it's like like under five bucks to watch the whole thing on YouTube. But it's um, uh, it's a really good movie. And it's um, uh, and if you, if you ever ha haven't seen the movie, Go and see the movie because you'll enjoy this playthrough so much more because this game follows the movie. Normally a lot of games that are based on movies suck, but this game is one of those exceptions where this game is awesome, has so much content to it, and such a great, amazing game. Soundtrack is also beautiful. Great soundtrack to this, very um, reminiscent of the old movies. And um, the PS3 version of this game is the best one, which that's what I'm playing, the Don's Edition. The Don's Edition is only on PS3. Normally the PC version would be better in a lot of games, but in this case the P PS3 version has better graphics and this has so much more content. So I hope that you guys enjoy this. This also takes place in New York. Um, it's an open world game, so let's get started on this new game. Do you wish to play the uh, prelude? Yes. The prelude is very important because it sets up Aldo's storyline. Alright. Here's a week's take. Nice. Good week, huh? Yeah, some high rollers. I'm gonna celebrate tonight. Taking Serafina to the Continental Club. Hey, baby. Mm. Where's my boy? Mm. He's been playing handball in the alley all day. I thought the noise was gonna drive me nuts. My sister's looking after him tonight, though. Good. Now, this was really unexpected. Oh my god. My boy! Oh Christ. Oh. So this is the Barzini family that's doing this. They bombed the Trapini bakery. Too bad about your bakery. You ain't escaping from us. He's outnumbered. Let's get him. No! You shouldn't have crossed the Barzini's. Just wait till I get my hands on you. <laughs> think you can take a... Don't think I'll forget this. Why don't you let me... You ain't done paying, Johnny. The melee combat in this game is actually really good. There's just so many different moves. Get your... Ah! Sorry, Johnny. It's just business. Give it to him. So Johnny died, and when you first played this mission, you thought that Johnny was going to be the main protagonist, but he's not. And that is Don Barzini right there, the same Don Barzini from the movie, the scummiest Donna out of all of them. Look away. Uh, uh, 
Save your anger. Save it. When you are old enough, when the time is right, you will take your revenge. The reason this scene is so well done is because Vito Corleone saw exactly what happened. And if you know Vito Corleone's backstory, when he when he was just a child, his father was murdered by um Adon as well. And so um uh, Vito knows exactly what Aldo's going for. He knows exactly what Aldo is feeling. He tells him when you're older, you will take your revenge. So that's the sense of Aldo's storyline. So now, you know, nine years later have passed, and you, the character creator in this game is actually pretty good. There's a lot of different ways that you can make Aldo. And um, uh, I'm gonna make the character here. I'm gonna skip through this because this is gonna take me a few minutes to make the, my character. Okay, so here we go. I finished making my character. Let's um, okay, play game here, and we'll play as Aldo. That's his. That's his name, anyways. Um. No Sicilian can refuse any request on his daughter's wedding day. The price of loyalty. Don Vito Corleone, the godfather, head of the Corleone family. So this is now 1945. Don Corleone, I am honored and grateful that you have invited me to your home. Serafina. It's been too long since you've come around. What's troubling you? Godfather. My husband was always loyal to you. He died for that loyalty. I have not forgotten him, nor the loss that you have suffered. Have you ever wanted for anything? Haven't I always taken good care of you? Padrino, forgive me. It's only that I'm so worried about my son. He's fallen in with some bad men. Fools. He's in trouble and... Please. He needs your help. Godfather. So, Don Corleone agrees to help Aldo, um because of the loyalty that his father gave to him. And I hope that their first child be a masculine child. Thank you, Luca, my most valued friend. Don Corleone, I'm gonna leave you now because I know that you are busy. Thank you. One more thing, my friend. I need you to find someone for me. Cause you drove the fucking car? I'm the leader of this gang, and you get what I say you get. Ah! Uh, stay down, punk! <laughs> Take his pockets. Uh, uh. Yeah, you don't mess with Luca Brasi. My name is Luca Brasi. I've been looking for you. Nineteen forty-five. Down on the um, Bowery, life is tough. A good place to hide for a kid on the make. But when Luca Brasi comes looking for you, it's hard to stay lost. Feared enforcer in the Corleone family. You ready? Let's see your moves. Quick hits, kid. Come on. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. So I see the melee combat is pretty good. There's a lot of different moves. Try punching across your body for more power. Mix it up. Pull back your fist, kid. Charge a punch. Alternate your punches, kid. Use both hands. Don't let him disrespect you, kid. Hey, you gonna fight or what? I want to see a move. So the backstory um behind what's going okay, on here. Lift him up. These idiots. Keep him grabbed um, and let him have it. 
they robbed some kind of store, um, uh, and Aldo you was the getaway driver, friends, and so they didn't think that Aldo deserved a cut for that and decided to beat him Keep up. This guy grabbed and go to town. Absolute idiots, these guys. They should have they should have known who Aldo's right, father kid, was. Let's see if you can handle this one. That he had connections to the Corleone family, morons, these guys. My name is Luca. Luca Brazzi. You remember me? I was a friend of your father's. I, I remember you. What are you doing here? Looking for you, kid. The Don, Don Corleone. He wants to make sure that you're safe. Made a promise to look after you, get you out of this petty thug bullshit. What does he want to do with me? Are you talking about the Don? You should be asking what are you gonna do for him? But hold with the questions. We gotta leave before the cop show. Welcome to the family. So uh, that was, um, uh, that was, you know, the first time we're playing as Aldo. He's the main character. Um, uh, the map is just massive in this game. And Luca Brasi, I like how they made him in the movie because the movie's a little bit different from the book. Um, where in the book, Luca Brasi is way more of a psycho in the, um, in the book. So I like his, um, uh, I like his character more in the movie than the book. Okay, kid, here's a few things to get you started. Your map will help you find your way around New York. I've marked the Corleone safe house on it. Go there first, get yourself cleaned up. Safe house, got it. Also, your notepad can be used to keep track of your various jobs. If you're ever confused about what to do, just check the notepad. Okay, Luca. Anything else I should know? Yeah, and this is important. We're at war, kid, and Little Italy ain't safe. This guy's one of my soldiers, my crew. He's gonna stick by you for a while and make sure you get to the safe house in one piece. Now get moving. I'll contact you later. Use the minimap to help you navigate objectives, job locations, businesses. So this is, um, uh, this is New York. Um, uh, this is, um... Oh, uh, let's see. Okay, yeah. So this is the entire map. We got Brooklyn um, uh, on the right side there. Little, We're in Little Italy right now, which this would kind of be southern part of Manhattan. Not the very bottom, but a little bit of the southern part of Manhattan. Um, uh, and then you got Hell's Kitchen and you got Midtown going up. And then you got New Jersey to the left side. New Jersey, that is, um, uh, that's not New York, it's a different state, but uh, the map is commonly referred to as New York, though. It's a, actually a decently sized map, you know, this is a, what, I think this game came out in 2005. I, how old was I? I? was 11 when I played this game the first time. Whoa, whoa. Huh. So you're the Don's new recruit. <laughs> okay, Luca just started shooting somebody immediately. Um... Move you fucking dead! Run for your lives! Okay, where is my safe house here? Okay, it's a few blocks away. Okay, let's let's get there. Those guys in brown are the Tatalia family from Brooklyn. Sons of bitches, most of them. Why don't you try bribing that cop over there? I'll try. You can do us a big favor by turning down the heat. I'm glad we understand each other. So this is, um, uh, when you have, uh, you've increased your respect level and earned health and skill points. When you have unspent skill points, go to the skills and upgrade screen in the pause menu to improve your attributes. Choose skills from the enforcer and operator pages to develop a mobster that suits your style. Good job. Maybe now the cops will lend us a hand, huh? So this is the thing, is you can actually use the police um, in this game to actually help you. So you can turn down the heat, and I think that you can actually con um, bribe like corrupt FBI agents, if I remember correctly, to go after the other families. In this time period, this was actually very common. Um, this would not happen today, you know, this is nowhere near as common today where somebody could walk up to a cop on the street and just give him a bribe. But back then, corruption was really high, and so this is believable that in New York that somebody would, um, uh, a mobster could just walk up to a cop and just bribe him. That could definitely happen. Go on ahead. I'll be right here. Welcome to your safe house. Safe house is pretty similar like in the GTA games. You can pick up some weapons and save your progress here. 
Uh, let's save here. Okay, there we go. Answer the telephone. Luca's gonna meet you outside. I wouldn't keep him waiting. Harassed by corrupt cops, Natalia's muscling in from Brooklyn. The Corleones are fighting to keep control of Little Italy. Time to uh, learn what makes the world go round. Sergeant Galtazino, corrupt cop bleeding Little Italy dry. Now, Sergeant Galtazino is a massive scumbag. Hey, kid. Let's take a walk. Ah, it's less crowded now. I like that. Makes it easier for a man to get his business done. I make good money, I help the family, I get a little action on the side. But one thing must be understood. I would never go against the Godfather. <gasps> yep, he just realized who he was honking at. Don Corleone is a man I respect. Old Emilio. He doesn't seem to give a damn about paying us respect. He's giving his kickbacks to the Tatalians. Needs to be taught a lesson. So, um, uh, back then and even today in mafia-controlled neighborhoods, people that live in those neighborhoods know who the gangsters are. They just do. Um, you see the gangster walking down the street, um, uh, you're not gonna do something like that, like honking right towards them. I want you to have a word with Emilio. Convince him to pay his dues to the Corleones. Think you know what to do? Sort of. How should I handle it? Eh, it depends. With some guys, you only need to show a little respect. Just walk up to him and talk to him. A little negotiation goes a long way. Got it. And if the guy don't look like he's gonna crack? Then you remind him why he needs protection in the first place. Try turning up the pressure, but don't go too far. A man pushed past his limits can be dangerous. Capiche? Extortion. So this is the most common way the mafia makes money, money after prohibition. First you gotta find a business right for the taking. To extort the owner, you gotta convince him that it's in his interest to pay us. Capiche? Each merchant folds under different kinds of pressure, and everyone has a weak spot. Some folks will listen to reason. Others, well, you're gonna have to uh, apply pressure. When targeting a merchant, you'll see his pressure show up under his health. Everyone has two lines, where they'll give in and where they'll fight back. The closer you can push a merchant to their breaking point without pushing them over, the more cash you'll take home. But be careful. A man can only take so much. Push them too far, and they'll snap. Maybe even take you on. Persuasion is an art. You can threaten the poor schmo with your bare fists or a gun. You can smash up his shop, even beat up some unlucky customers. All sorts of ways. Me? I like the simple approach. Crack open the register oh. with his own head. Sometimes, though, you won't even have to break a sweat. If a shopkeeper asks for a favor, you might be able to win him over by doing what he asks. Earn his loyalty, you'll be rewarded in kind. So this is a protection racket. So the mafia in, in America made the bulk of their money in the 1920s during Prohibition when alcohol was um, illegal. And then what happened, well, they sold alcohol, they opened up illegal bars, they ran breweries, they produced it, they brought it in from Canada. After Prohibition, the Mafia invested their money in other businesses, but also they started doing protection money. And you protection like money, this is more? like, um, this is one of the oldest crimes that still goes on today. Um, it's not as common today, but back then this used to happen a lot. And this, used, this was an epidemic in New York, like, you know, back in the day, um, where basically gangsters would just come into a store and they would just say, um, you know, pay us protection money. And they'd say, you know, we'll protect your store from hoodlums, you know, gangsters, people that will cause your store any kind of problems. But the thing is, you have no choice. You can't just say no to them. And um, they will extort you. They they can beat the store owner up. They can smash the store up. Um, uh, you know, they can land that person in the hospital. They can do a lot of really bad things. They'll threaten them until they get their protection money. And the, the really messed up thing about this is that the mobsters in their eyes, the way that they see it, 
is they see it like they're offering a service. That's the way a lot of them see it. They're like, oh, we're not robbing somebody. We're offering them a service, even though they have no choice. And the thing is, though, even when people pay protection money, they're still not really going to protect your store. Very rarely will they actually ever protect your store. Um, it's more of a protection fee from them smashing up your store than from other people. So even if, if you're paying protection money and some hoodlums come and rob your store or smash up your store, what are you going to do? Are you going to complain to the gangster, hey, I'm paying protection money and you're not protecting me? You know, you don't even want to really do that. And um, the thing is, the, the reason the protection racket schemes were just so difficult to dismantle is because they oftentimes targeted mom and pop shops in poor neighborhoods. So they would target like, you know, small stores like this in a poor neighborhood, working class neighborhood. And um, what would happen is if you reported it to police, the chances are the police could be corrupt, which they really were back then. Um, not all cops. Obviously, there's good cops all around. But back then, corruption was just much more rife. And what would happen is if you, um, uh, if you reported the crime, you could report it accidentally to a corrupt cop. It's on the mafia's payroll. But even if you reported it to an honest cop, the honest cop might come by and arrest the people that are extorting you. But the people that are extorting you work up for higher up people. They work for a higher organization. And so they're going to find out that you called the cops on them, had some of their guys arrested and then they're gonna come to your store and it's gonna be really really bad at that point they might even kill you so um uh, this is just that's why it's so hard to dismantle these protection racket schemes because there's just, it's just such a chain there's so many people involved in it it's from they send the higher ups send their soldiers in their associates in and they extort the owners and you know this type of stuff happens um mistakes if you have to ask forget about it. what are you doing back here we're luca brazi sent me he has some business he wants to settle with you today why should i even give you a dime why don't you guys bother someone else? Get your grubby hands off of so me! So every single store owner in this game has some type of weak spot. Um, you might be beating them up, it might be pointing a gun at them. Not that! So that that's this guy's weak spot, is destroying property. How much is this? You really should clean this place up. How much is this? Let me go! Listen, Emilio. The Corleones run this neighborhood. If you're not paying them, you'll pay the consequences. I don't want no trouble with you. Take the money. Give Luca Brazzi my regards. Okay, so we've extorted the merchant $525 a day. Um, and so I'll tell you though, the $525 that you have in this game, that's um, uh, that's based on today's money. Because there's no way that somebody, a store like this, would be making $525 in, what is this, 1945? Um, you know, that's, that's, money was just worth way more back then. Now, rackets, um, these are illegal businesses that would operate in the back of legitimate businesses. You wanna own New York City? You wanna be the king? You gotta control the rackets. They're all over town, usually in some crappy little shop with a dirty secret. These shops are called fronts, and they're hiding the illegal racket stuff that's being pushed on the streets. Break the shopkeeper. And maybe he'll let you poke around his business. If you're lucky, you'll find the racket boss. Try cracking some skulls and persuade him to show the Corleone some loyalty. But it's better to buy him out instead, if you can afford it. The more rackets you control, the more cash you'll make for the family. But to be a real earner, you have to find the warehouses supplying the fronts. These fortresses are a tough nut to crack. But if you take one over, you'll discover where all the liquor, weapons, and other racket merchandise actually arrives in New York. The hubs. Taking over a hub is the key to breaking the rival family's back. There's another way to get your teeth into those rackets. Hijack their supply trucks first. Each neighborhood is full of trucks smuggling goods from warehouse to business and back. Stop the truck and take out the guards, then rough up the driver. Take his keys, stash the truck somewhere safe, and you'll score some fat loot. Finally, don't forget to check in on the local brothels and casinos. Those gamblers, pimps, and madams tend to stick together, but if you smooth talk the owner just right, you might find yourself sitting in the lap of luxury. So, as you can see, this game is very detailed. There's like a lot of different activities to do in this game. A lot of different ways to make money, too. So, what do we got here? An illegal casino in the second floor of the butcher shop. Let's buy out the racket, the boss. To play. Beat it. The Corleones are looking to share in the action. What's that worth to you? Sure. I had a good run. Best of luck to you. So, 
So there we go. We've purchased the um the casino. You, the most common um uh the most common of these illegal businesses in the back. These were oftentimes um uh illegal bars called speakeasies. But after prohibition ended, you know, it was the most common was casinos. Hey, this is my neighborhood. You and your paisan must honor me. Okay, okay. I don't want no trouble. I don't like cheapskates. But I'll take what you've got. Maybe we'll see each other around sometime, huh? So that's the corrupt sergeant in this neighborhood. You'll be seeing him again. Um, but, um, uh, corrupt cops, in my opinion, uh, it's is the old like... story, kid. Make trouble, and the cops are gonna be all over you. The bigger the crime, the more heat that comes down on your head. Cops will be everywhere, and they won't be too friendly. That is, if they ain't already shooting. Manage your heat by bribing cops on the street or cooling your heels at a safe house. Each neighborhood is run by a police captain. Leave some problems with this guy, and he'll make sure all his lackeys look the other way if you want to wave your gun around. Hell, they might even fight for you, as long as you don't push things too far. If you join the family, you'll get Tom's report. All our guys report back to Tom and tell him the heat levels in each neighborhood. Keep an eye on the heat, or you might get burned. So what I was saying before is the the corrupt cops oftentimes can be even worse than the gangsters. And um, uh, this game actually shows that pretty well. Jeez, what took you so long? You get the money? Yeah. Hand it over. See? I told you this business was interesting, huh? I want you to meet up with a friend of mine, Paul Gatto. Show him this. That way he'll know you're a friend of mine. I gotta go. So the thing about Aldo is Aldo actually has a lot of good character development. When you start the game, he's kind of like a fragile kid growing up in Little Italy, but um, he toughens up a lot throughout the story. You look like you want to talk to me? You must be the new guy I heard about. Interested in making a little money? Hey, sure. What can I do for you? There's a barber on Mott Street, protected by the Tatalias. Show him who runs this town and the place will be yours. <laughs> you might even get a free haircut out of the deal. When you're done, talk to some of the other merchants you see. A good Corleone enforcer always starts out as a good earner. You understand? Okay, so let's, um, that's a see him again, bonus objective that we have to extort the barber shop. We got a thousand uh, five hundred thirty-five dollars. Pardon me. Okay, that would have been a, a lot of money back then too. Still a lot of money today, but back then it's a uh, a lot of money. Got something you might? Nice, huh? I'll give you a good price. Don't lose any fingers now. So this is a black market uh, merchant. Um, I've been saving this. Thanks. I'm gonna buy. I think you're gonna like you. Three packs of dynamite. Um. Extort the little Italy barber and get a haircut. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ooh, Brazi just threw him out the Don't window. Be foolish, little man. Get your grubby hands off of me. How much is this? Let me go. These razors are really sharp, aren't they? Get out of my shop. No! Oh. You need to make up your mind, now. You're very convincing. <laughs> I'll give. So there we go, taking over the store. Um, and we can get a free haircut with him, but I don't really need it right now. Maybe um, I'll come get you later, kid. Might have something for you. This uh, is what we get the dynamite for, by the way, for these saves. You're on your own now. Well, there's also banks that you can rob. Oh man, I didn't think that blast would push me back that much, but... A terrible tragedy. There we go. That wasn't really profitable considering that dynamite cost us 500. Go ahead, never. I want no part of it. Yeah, let's let's get out of here right now. He's got a gun. Extort businesses to make money. Okay, let's see. The Corleones will protect your newsstand for a small weekly fee. No, I am not paying anything. 
Why don't you guys bother someone oh, else? Oh, wow. So sometimes there's a hint on, on um, uh, what you have to do to scare them. And so probably baseball bat. Let's see. Stop. Oh, yeah. Get your money. That was the weak spot. Should I look for you in the obituaries? Pay. You're very persuasive. I give in. So you see, this is like really messed up. Like, um, this happened back in the day. Like, they would actually come into the shop, Someone smash the shop help. up, and just threaten you like this. This was this was common. This is the most realistic version of protection um, of racket money schemes that I've seen in the game. Because a lot of games will have something like this. Mafia Definitive Edition shows one scene of it. Um, it it's in Vice City stories as well. Um, but uh, this is, um, uh, you know, this is typically what happened. Um, and it's kind of messed up. Training mission, a grave situation. No Sicilian can refuse a request on his daughter's wedding day. And so the time arrives when Bona Sera's request must uh, be honored and his daughter avenge. Polly Gatto, a Corleone maid man working for the uh, capo, uh, Pete Clemenza. Uh, Mary Monk Malone, Irish Italian wise guy um, uh, with the Corleones. So um, uh, this scene was not, I don't believe this scene was in the movie. No, I don't think this was. Um, I haven't seen the movie in such a long time. But um, basically in the beginning of the movie, this guy, Bonacera, he's like um, a funeral home director. He comes to Don Corleone on his daughter's wedding day and tells him that um, his daughter's um, uh, boyfriend, Bonacera's daughter's boyfriend, um, had beaten her up. And um, he wants Don Corleone to kill him. But Don Corleone says instead we're going to scare him. And Don Corleone instead that he says that he will ask him for a favor one day um, for that. I'm looking for Paulie Gatto. Luca. Luca sends his love. So, you Luca's new errand boy? I ain't nobody's errand boy. Hey, take a joke, why don't you? Take it easy. Take it easy. Look, Luca told us about you. He's just uh, busting your balls, Paulie. Right, Paulie? Thinks he's a comedian. Meet Marty Malone. You ain't a pretty sight, but... My uh, friends call me Monk. Pleased to meet you. Likewise. Okay, okay, this ain't no tea party. We got work to do. Now follow me. It's right around the corner. The Undertaker's daughter just got out of the hospital. She got beat up pretty bad by a couple of punks. We gotta off these guys. No. We're under orders. Just beat them up real bad. So keep you cool. I'll show you what to do. So that shows what they did to her. Me and Paulie are just gonna chaperone over here, make sure things don't get out of hand. This game shows Quiet. a lot of scenes that the movie didn't show. It don't also me. shows the hit on Bruno Tatalia. Don't make Luca a lie. All right, he said you wouldn't have any problem. To oh shit! Chase after him. Stop! Please! Ah! Stupid foot away the bat, kid. Push him up against the wall. So now, um, if you're gonna be playing this on an emulator like me, you need to have a PlayStation controller. Even PlayStation um, 3, 4, and 5 controllers work. I'm doing with the PS5 <laughs> controller. And so you see there's motion in this game. You know, if you move the now controller forward, you can actually um, uh, throw people in certain directions. Um. Oh, not bad. I think this kid can fight, Paulie. She's just some damn broad. Oh, this guy thinks that he can beat up whoever the hell he wants to. Okay, let's see. Ha! Yep. Throw him over there. Ha! Okay. Throw him now to the side. There we go. The girl. Christ, this guy's gonna kick your ass if you don't stop blocking. Ah! Oops. Well, well, well. Looks like there's nobody home in this one. Nah, he's down there. Maybe he can use some help. Please, I won't do it again. Oh, we know you ain't gonna do it again. Jeez, should have learned to treat the games a little nicer, with a little respect. Now it's too late. 
Good night, sweetheart. Come on. That's enough. Oh, there was a money bag in the mission. I, um, uh, I didn't find it. Um, okay, so the money bag was right back here, um, behind that grave. Okay, so I think we'll wrap it up here, guys. I hope that you guys are enjoying this, um, uh, series. Oh, what do we got here, Monk? Oh, Luca was right. You got balls. You did good, just like he said. Now get the hell out of here. He's waiting for you over in the bowery. So, a um, monk is, um, a uh, monk is a, not a made man, even though he's kind of like a soldier because he's, um, uh, he's, I think, half Italian and half Irish, and only somebody who's, um, 100% Italian, or in a lot of cases for the Mafia, of pure Sicilian descent, can become a made man. So those, those morons, like, they beat up this poor girl, and not only that, but they were still harassing her. Like, that is just, What's um, your problem, uh, buddy? that's just, what a bunch of idiots, but, um, uh, you know, they're not gonna be, um, uh, beating anyone up ever again, you know, that's, they're just scared, uh, they just, com that guy completely crapped himself after that, but, uh, that's one scene that the game shows you that the movie doesn't, um, so there are a few more scenes that they talk about in the movie that are never showed in the game, what like the, the Tessio scene, the Bruno Tattaglia scene, those scenes that are discussed in the movie that happened off screen are actually shown in the game. So I hope that you guys um, uh, enjoyed this um, playthrough, um, or this part I should say. We're going to have a lot more parts on this. And as I play through this, I think I'm going to be taking over like stores as I play through this. Kind of like how I did Vice City stories. I'm going to be like taking over the other businesses, and eventually until I like wipe out all the other families. So um, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I'll see you guys.